Well, the weather hasn't been cooperating with me very much on this uh, radio drill press here. And it's pretty early. The sun's just poking through the trees. And I'm hoping to get this thing moved up to the building here pretty quick. But, uh, you know, the sign of the times, uh, things are changing really rapidly. And I'll show you something I've never seen here before. This was my grandfather's house uh, built in the 1940s. About yeah. well, 1940. I'm working on the landscaping. The, the day lilies are doing very good. But you walk down here is my junky old truck and uh, look on the corner. <laughs> See that? It's a kind of uh, narcotic, trank, fentanyl mixed with Drano. Man, that's sad stuff, you know? And, uh, you know, I just, uh, it, it totally amazes me. I've never seen that here. But every now and then I see a, uh, a person that's in the, I mean, I call that the stoop or something like that. Uh, they eventually get picked up and hauled away somewhere and sent to Seattle, I think is what they do in these small towns. But uh, that's a very sad thing. I just, uh, I, I thought I'd show that, just uh, um, a sign of times changing. Okay. Well, in here we're not using hard narcotics, so uh, we can grind tools. <laughs> Boy, what a world, huh? Okay, so I dug out more drills here that are uh, bad on the end. And uh, these were from the plastic mold shop. And uh, I can see this one here. I hope I can keep these in the frame here. This one here was reground. And you can see at a shallower uh angle than a standard drill and this works really good for drilling out um, like broken taps and stuff like that if uh, if you can keep that angle shallow and uh, you can do um, an old timer I know called it chisel point and uh, you can do that on the uh, cutter grinder here and put some uh, multi-angles but you want to keep uh, the angles and clearances about as small as possible so you have the strongest edge it just depends what you're doing now I've never ground cutting tools commercially I have made some special tools for people at times but uh, what I use this for is to enhance the other machines and actually this uh, becomes for me the central machine the go-to machine um, to set up first on, on any project and it's really true if I'm going to be doing boring and stuff like that I'll, I'll configure this for uh, sharpening the boring bars. And uh, machines like the, uh, the jig bore, you are, uh, by cutting chips, hitting super high uh, and close uh, tolerances. So you need a super sharp edge. And it's not practical to use uh, inserts on, uh, on a machine like that. You can surely buy inserts for uh, high shear, low deflection, and stuff like that. But they don't last long, and they're very expensive. And it's hard to keep the right 
tool on hand, the right nose radius, the right angles and stuff for cutting different alloys when you're hitting close tolerances. And uh, that uh, jig bore over there and the Monarch 10 E all covered up, Sleeping Beauty there, are nothing but close tolerances. So this machine here becomes central um, for me. Well, anyway, I'm going to complete this uh, cutting the tips off. I got an email uh, from a viewer here sent some tools. I'm going to cut the... Uh, the ends off it. You can see uh, one one lip there's toast, and you have to make a decision whether you're going to grind that back uh, with your uh, cup wheels and other wheels, or if you're just going to cut that end off. You know, this one's not too bad, <clears throat> but it's still quite a distance to grind back. Okay. Well, I'll be back with something. I'm going to sharpen some of this stuff, and I'll, I'll click the camera on. Oh, it's nice to go at an easy pace around here, especially at my age. <laughs> so I uh, use these call it extensions. And uh, let me, this is, uh, uh, this one goes up to quarter inch. And I'm using that to uh, cut the tips off the uh, carbide drills. And um, this one here goes up to 3 8 inch. And I'll show you again here. These uh, Ericsson collets are, and the ER collets. I just happen to, to have this uh, Ericsson uh, set up for years and years and I, I kind of almost prefer them over ER but ER is fine. The one thing I noticed is you have to tighten the ER once quite a bit more. So I got a, um, a larger drill here and what you can do with these and the ER Get that back in there. Is you can choke up on the drill. You know, normally this is a screw uh, machine length drill here. So normally it'd hold the drill like that. But you can have this in the machine, uh, like uh, for instance, my brown and sharp mill there where there's hardly any clearances. And you can take and loosen that and you wanna drill that hole and like some tough material, you can choke up on the bit like that and start the hole and it'll run accurately. Now Boeing used these for years and then they went to the ER type. But both the uh, Ericsson and the uh, e ER type uh, call it you can do that a lot of people don't know that but you can and you know of course you're going to do light drilling holding it by the flutes like that starting holes just you know but it's a handy thing to know <clears throat> and bringing that over to the cutter grinder is handy too because then you can choke up on the flutes better than the 5c call it like i said before and uh, have the, the tool held close to your grinding wheel. What, you know, otherwise, if you grab it by the shank and uh, try to grind this tip, you're probably going to have to have some kind of a rest or something to keep it vibrating. So. I don't know many people that do this on a tool and cutter grinder. As a matter of fact, uh, I showed a guy this and he threw away all this other stuff and went to ER collets. And uh, is quite happy, didn't uh, care for uh, 
Um, the machine was uh, a mono set, and they have a lot of specialty stuff, and he just got rid of it, sold it on eBay, and <laughs> I switched over to uh, these types of collars. And for that reason, see, okay, I will, uh, I made a decision here. I think I can grind this uh, in mill back on the other side with the regular grinding wheels, but here I'm going to have to cut it off. So uh, this is a half inch end mill and I'll cut it off. We'll watch it do that. I'll be back when I get that running. You know, I'm convinced the best thing you can do with a machine tool is use it. <laughs> it really is true. Because if they sit for a while, they get pretty stiff. And uh, it, it's really nice the way this machine's uh, working that I've been using it. And I'm running it all the way back. Gave it a shot of oil. And then I'm going to run it all the way forward. And I can feel that the waves have oil on them. So when I start cutting that carbide end mill off, it's not going to be sticky. And, you know, and jump and jam it to the wheel. I'm used to using the uh, motorized workhead, which is a lot heavier unit and uh, not have to manually crank and feed at the same time. So, I'll find a place for you. We'll watch this carbide end mill get cut off here. Let's see, let's get some uh, light on the subject. And I think I got it so I'm cutting minimal off. Vacuum going. Here we are. If I go pretty slow, if I go pretty fast, I can see it's kind of getting into the air. You don't have to be in a hurry. <laughs> I have to say this all to a motor that's worked really, really well. There are quite a few versions of this tool. And there's starting to be uh, more attachments like this available at uh, the top. I hope you can hear me. I'll have a microphone set up for... Uh, Pretty quick. Well, next week I hope. Or this end of this year. That can sit more of the glass.
like I said, that dust is toxic. The run out on this wheel is improving as I use it. The uh, radio run out. I don't get very close to that because it's coming off. Yeah, that wheel is working very nice. That's a short wheel. Six inch, 35,000 steps, 100 grit. It's going to fall off pretty quick here. There it is. Oh, shit. Good look at the... Uh, how about you? Yeah, it's a good square start, isn't it? <laughs> that end, I'll just uh, grind it back until it's sharp. Okay, I'm going to finish cutting this stuff off, then I'll start sharpening some things. <laughs>